Today, what we're going to do is one step equation. Guys, one step equations. We're going to be talking about addition and subtraction equations specifically. But the process that we're going to go through for these equations is actually exactly the same as what you're going to do for multiplying and dividing. Now, there are several properties that I want to point out to help you understand mathematically why we can do what we're doing. But once we actually show you and let you know this is why, I'm not going to require you guys, at least for now, to regurgitate all of these. But I do want to make sure you understand the why behind what we are doing. Now, that being said, a lot of these numbers are relatively easy at the beginning. Please follow the steps, even though you can do a lot of these mentally, because once you do the steps, it'll help you as we move on to do the more difficult problems. Our first one, we're going to talk about the subtraction property of equality. What this says, if you subtract the same number from each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. This is actually a very significant property because this is what we're going to use to help us to be able to solve equations. So an example with numbers. If I had, for example, 12 plus 6 equals 18. Subtraction property says if I take the same number away, in other words, if I subtract six from both sides of my equation, it will stay equal. So if I'm adding six and instead I subtract six, what have I in effect done? How much am I adding? What's six minus six? Layla? Zero. zero. So really what I've said is 12 plus zero, because those have just canceled each other out, equals what's 18 minus six? What's 18 minus 6? 12. What is 12 plus 0? So in effect, what we have said is 12 equals 12. Is that a true statement? Yeah. yeah. So by taking the same number away from both sides of my equation, I have, in effect, left my equation equal. Here's another important step, and that's this one right here. And I'm only going to do this a few times, but I want you to understand why. This is another property that we don't have here, so I'm going to have you add it onto your paper. This is called the additive. Add, that's a D. Additive identity. I, oh, this is so much fun. That is a T. Identity property of zero. And what this says is any number plus zero equals that number. That's kind of layman's terms to help you understand. But as an example, Katie, give me a number, any number. Uh, 24. 24 plus 0 equals 24. Does everybody agree? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Dylan, give me another number. Any number. You have an entire universe of numbers. Just pick one. 10? 10 plus 0 equals 10. Everybody agree? You notice I didn't even have to limit them, right? I gave them the infinite number of, uni of numbers because it doesn't matter what number you give me. If I add 0 to it, I stay with that number. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay? So any number plus 0 is that number. That is really what we're doing mathematically, guys, to be able to solve these equations. So when I do this with algebra, it, maybe that will make more sense. So let's say I take a number and I add 5 to get 17. The subtraction property of equality says I can subtract 5 from both sides. What's 5 minus 5? Zero. Zero. 
So I've effectively canceled those out because I now am saying a plus 0. What's 17 minus 5? 12. Because of the additive identity property of 0, when I say a plus 0, I could just put a, right? Because does it matter what the number is if I'm adding 0 to it? No, it's just that number. So I now have a solution that a equals 12. Now, one really cool thing about math, you don't have to wait for me to grade your paper to see if you're right. Because I can take what I came up with my solution, put it back in my original equation and see if it's true. So I can say 12 plus 5 equals 17. 17 equals 17. Check. I got the correct solution. Make sense, guys? Yes, Bonnie. No, last time we did the guess and check. Remember how I gave you the whole lecture how I'm not a big fan of guess and check? But I like that. I don't because this way I can do it every time. Oh. I don't have to guess. Now I can actually just solve. The other big property that we'll be using today is what we call the addition property of equality. You guys could probably fill this out on your own based on what we just did. But the addition property of equality says if I add, add the same number, to each side of the equation, the two sides remain same. or equal. Okay? So an example with numbers. So on this one, let's say something like 20 minus 6 equals 14. The addition property says if I add the same number to both sides, my answer still stays the same. So if I add 6 to both sides, what is 6 minus 6? Zero. zero. So that is a 0. So I now have 20 plus 0. What is 14 plus 6? 20. 20 plus 0 is just 20. Does 20 equal 20? Yeah. So what steps did we use? We used the addition property of equality to add 6 to both sides of our equation to keep it equal. And then I use the additive identity property of 0, because I'm adding 0 to 20, meaning that the 20 equaled 20. What does this look like algebraically? Algebraically, if I have some number a, and I subtract 5, <clears throat> but then it equals 17, now instead of subtracting, I'm going to add. So if I add 5 to both sides of my equation, what's 5 minus 5? 0, so that's a 0, so I now have a plus 0. What's 17 plus 5? 22. What's a plus 0 equal? A plus 0. A. A plus 0 is? A equals 22. We can do our quick check. So our check is 22 minus 5 equals 17. 17 equals 17. Check. So we got the correct solution. Pretty much. Yep. But the nice thing for you guys is, I know there's a lot of you that are already going, but Mr. Moore, I can just do this in my head. So we really gave you a lot of numbers today you can't do in your head. So if you don't follow along and learn the process, you're going to be really hurting on the on the classwork for today. Yes, Bobby? Can I ask you a question? Yes. And, and also, is it easy to remember? Uh, this looks pretty easy, so. <laughs> now, what I will tell you, Zoami, I don't need you guys to write this one out on your work, and, I, and I'll show you in a minute what I expect to see. So it's basically just three steps. You write the equation, show me what you're adding or subtracting, and give me the answer. Now, here's the big concept for today. We can use inverse operations to solve equations. Inverse operations undo each other. So, for example, to solve an addition equation, I'm going to use subtraction. If it was subtraction, I would use addition. Basically, I'm going to use the inverse operation for whatever my number is. So we're going to walk through a couple of examples using a visual scale to help you understand this concept. 
So what is the idea of a scale? To keep it nice and level like this, what do I need to know about the both sides? Layla? They have to be equal. They have to be equal. For my scale to be level, whatever's on both sides has to be the same. Everybody okay with that? So if a scale is balanced, that means it has equal amounts on both sides, right? So we can think of the center of the scale, this piece right here, as our equal sign. So this part of the scale is our equal sign. Go and draw it on the image. Now we're going to draw a dotted line through the middle of the scale. So do a dotted line down through the middle. To help us remember that the two sides of the scale represent the two sides of the equation. Then we're going to use our equation and we're going to put it on each side of our scale. In this case, we're going to use this equation right here. X plus 6 and 10. So over here I've got X plus 6. X plus 6 on this side, I just have the number 10. But I want to figure out what X is, right? That's our whole idea is to be able to solve it. So if I have an extra 6 on this side, what should I do to get x by itself? How do I do that? What operation? Subtract. So I'm going to subtract 6. But if I only took 6 off one side of my scale, what's going to happen to the scale? It's going to go boom, right? So how do I keep it from going boom? What do I need to do? Swami? Add what? Well, I have to take 6 off of this side. Is there something I can do to keep it equal? What are you doing, Jaden? Jaden? I do minus 6 on both sides. So if I take 6 away from both sides, will that stay equal? Yes. Because yes. right now what's happened here is that plus 6 and that minus 6 is canceled out. That's now gone, right? So what do I have left on this side of my scale? X. On this side, I had 10, but I subtracted 6, so what do I have left? Make sense? So, if I were to do this, here's what this looks like algebraically, guys. And right now, just do this. I'll show you. I'll write these out for you in a minute. We're going to circle our variable. We're still going to draw our line through their equal sign. What number is with my variable? 6, and the operation is? The operation is addition. So the opposite or inverse would be subtract. So I'm going to subtract 6. But anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Subtract the property of equality. Those have now crossed out. So all I have left on this side is x. On this side, 10 minus 6 gives me 4. And I can do a quick check. I put that number. Once I have my solution, I said it's 4. Then I just put this number, 4, back where my x is. And I say 4 plus 6 equals 10. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 equals 10. Check. That means I have the true solution to my equation. Make sense? That's because you were in the bathroom the whole time, Ethan. Yeah, you were. Okay, any questions for people that didn't spend the first part of the class in the bathroom? Okay, go ahead and turn the page. Now, let's work through a few more examples using the scale. Guys, you should always check your solution. You'll know immediately whether your solution is correct or not. This is why math locks. Unlike language arts or history, where you have to turn in your paper and hope that you put down the right answer, in math, you can actually check yourself, and you'll know before I even look at it if you got it right or wrong. That's if you're willing to make the effort. So on all these, we're going to go through the same process. Put the equal sign in our little triangle. Draw your line down through the center. And then put my equation on the two sides. So over here, I've got x plus 4. Over here, I've got 10. So if I want to get x by itself. Right now, I've added 4 to it. So how do I get it by itself? Minus 4. And again, Traction the property of equality. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So 4 minus 4 is 0. Those cross out. So I just have x on this side. 10 minus 4 is 
So show, do it showing my work. So I have x plus 4 equals 10. I'm going to circle my variable, draw a line through the equals. Instead of adding 4, I'm now going to subtract 4 from both sides. Those cross out because 4 minus 4 is 0. That leaves me with x on this side. 10 minus 4 is 6. I can do our check. I'm going to put the 6 in for the x. So x plus 4 equals 10. 10 equals 10. Check. My solution works. Okay. Let's look at another one. Put our equal sign in here. Draw your line through the middle. On this side, we've got x minus 3. On this side, we have 6. So if I want to get rid of the fact that I took away 3 from the x to figure out what it was, what should I do? Ethan? So how do I do that mathematically? So minus 3 puts 3 on there. I want to get rid of the minus 3. How do I get rid of it? Plus 3. So I add 3 to both sides of my equation. That 3 minus 3 cancel out. So now I just have x on this side. 6 plus 3 is 9. Mathematically, what does this look like? x minus 3 equals 6. Here's my variable. I draw my line. The opposite of subtracting 3 would be adding 3. Those now go away, so I just have x equals 9. We can do our check. I put my solution in. 9 minus 3 equals 6. 6 equals 6. It checks. Oh. Gabby? Uh, so Pretty much. This is how we solve it algebraically. The other one you may notice is here, I'm actually circling the variable as well. So not only do I have the line, but I've also circled my variable. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, our next one, again, draw your equal sign in, draw your line down the middle. On this side, I have 2 plus x. This side, I have 7. Don't let the order mess you up. I'm still just adding 2 to the x, correct? So if I want to get rid of that, what would I do, Kyla? Why subtract two? Because of the addition. So I'm going to subtract two to get rid of it. I do that to both sides. Those have now canceled out. All I have left here is x. 7 minus 2 gives me 5. In my math world, 7 minus 2 is a 5, not a 9. So 2 plus x equals 7. Here's my variable. Draw my line. The number with my variable is the 2, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Those go away. I'm just left with x. 7 minus 2 is 5. Substituting to check my answer, I put the 5 in for the x. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 equals 7. We have another check. That's two. Seven doesn't equal seven? No, because I had two plus five. I mean, two plus five is seven, doesn't it? Makes sense? Okay, next one. Here's our equal sign. We're going to draw the line. So we're doing x minus three on this side. We've got two on this side. So instead of subtracting 3, I'm going to do what, Ethan? Add 3. So I add 3 to both sides. The 3 and the minus 3 cancel out. I just have x. 2 plus 3 is 5. Mathematically, what does this look like? x minus 3 equals 2. Here's my variable. The opposite of subtracting 3 would be adding 3 to both sides. So those now cancel out. I just have my x. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 5. So our check, so we'll put that in now. Say 5 minus 3 equals 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 equals 2. We are good. Apologize at home for that. That does say 5 minus 3. Bad spot on the board.
Okay, our last one we're going to do right now is a quick word problem. Mostly because I do want to make sure you guys have this. This is going to be a major part of your quiz. You've got to be able to take these word problems, identify your variable, and re translate directly from math to English. Kyla, put the note away before I come back and read it to everybody on the Internet. Ruben and Tariq have 245 point and 5 tenths downloaded minutes of music. Ruben has 132 minutes. How many belong to Tariq? Write and solve an addition equation. So I've got to make sure I'm doing this correctly. To determine how many minutes belong to Tariq. There's one of my questions. What property did I use? There's another question. So here's where you've got to be very careful, guys. So you've actually got three tasks we need to do. We need to write and solve an addition equation. They told me exactly what type to do to find out how many minutes belong to three. And we have to tell what property we use to do so. So the first thing we need to do is start working through our problem. So Ruben and Tariq have 245 and 5 tenths. That is a total, meaning that's our equals. The next thing listed is Ruben has 132. How many belong to Tariq? So what operation is that? Addition. Addition. But what don't I know? So let's do our variable. What do you want to call that? So T. T is what? Remember, be as specific as possible in identifying your variables, guys. It will make everything easier. So, number of mu minutes, music for Tariq. Does that give us a good definition? I could add downloaded, but I think that gives us a, a really good idea on what it is. So, I know that it's the 132 plus T. Now, to solve my equation, here's my variable, there's my equal sign. What number's with my variable? Ethan? Minus what? No, what number is with my variable? 132. So, what operation is it? Now, what operation is it right now? Addition. So to get rid of addition, I need to use subtraction. subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 132 from both sides. So 132 minus 132, that leaves me 0. 0 plus t equals t. Additive identity property is 0. So my t equals, don't forget when I subtract decimals, what's my big rule, Gabby? Big rule in subtracting or adding decimals. I asked you, Gabby, you don't have to raise your hand. What about the zero? No? I don't know. Because you're busy playing at your table instead of paying attention. Line up the decimals. Thank you, Kaden. So that's probably why you were thinking zero, because I can add a zero to show where that decimal place lines up. Now I just subtract. So 5 minus 0 is 5. My decimal place comes straight down. 5 minus 2 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. I now have my solution. Because it's a word problem, we need to go ahead and write out a full answer. So Tariq had... 113 and 5 tenths minutes of music. Have I answered the question fully? No, who said no? What do you mean I have one more question? There you go. So what part did I use, Caden? What property did I use? Not operation. What property did I use? Jaden?
Back to what? There you go. I use subtraction. Property of equality. Now, technically, I also used the additive identity property of zero because I was trying to get this side down to t plus zero. But at this point, I'm not making you guys write that stuff. I just want to make sure you understand that is exactly why we are doing what we are doing. Okay, go ahead and turn the page, guys. Now, before I get you guys started on this, I actually want to have you add something to the top of your paper. You may want to make sure you leave yourself plenty of room because there's actually five steps here. Yes, Gabby. No. Because I assure you, by the time you get home tonight, if I asked you what STE was, you would have absolutely no clue. Yeah, you know that now because you're looking at it. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to teach you guys a way to solve these equations that I've developed over the last 11 years. So there is a reason why I have each step. Step one. Circle your variable. Gee, me, Christmas. See if it writes better. One, circle the variable. Step two, because that's the most common one we use. Because normally, if I have an equation, I want to be able to graph it, which means I need x and y. Step two. Draw a line through the equal sign. Step three, find the number with the variable. Do the opposite. Yeah, you guys are not ever going to sit together again. You know exactly who I'm talking to. Operation with that number. So whatever number is with my variable, that's the number that I'm going to do the inverse operation with. That last part says that number. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Next step. Step four. And this is where the subtraction, addition, properties of equality come in. Do the same thing. Okay, so that was for number three. Yep. To the other side. Uh, pretty much, but number five, just because especially we're working with fractions, simplify if needed. Okay, so I'm going to run through a couple examples with you to help you see what these look like. On the first one, circle the variable. I find my variable, I circle it. Step two, I draw a line through the equal sign. Line goes straight down. And I'll be honest, guys, And when I first 
was developing how to do this, I didn't have that line. And I still had a lot of students really confused. Because for some reason, I thought that circling the variable would help them understand which side of the equation they needed to do. So the line actually does two things for you. Number one, it should make it easier to say, oh, wow, there is the number with my variable. But number two, it helps to make sure you understand that I have to do the same thing on both sides of that wall. Because again, back to my scale, if I'm not doing the same thing on both sides, I'm going to throw my scale out of whack and it's not going to be equal. It won't be the same. So what number is with my variable? Ethan? And what operation? Addition. So the opposite would be subtract with that number 3.8. And then step four, I'm going to do that same thing to the other side. So since I subtracted 3.8 on the left, I'm also going to subtract 3.8 on the right. Why? Because 3.8 minus 3.8 is 0. x plus 0 is x. I know that from the additive identity property of 0. So I now have x equals 4.3 minus 3.8. Again, make sure you line up your decimal places. Then I do my subtraction. I'm going to have to borrow. 13 minus 8 is 5. My decimal comes straight down. What 3 minus 3 is 0. So my answer is x equals 5 tenths. That it. it is pretty easy, but I will warn you, we gave you some pretty nasty numbers intentionally because I think there's a lot of you who would not go through this whole process if we made the numbers easy. So unfortunately for the chaos in the room, you guys are all going to suffer. So I'm going to do number three for you as well just to show a, a subtraction example. Same process. I circle my variable. I draw my line. What number is with my variable, Katya? Katya, what? What number is with my variable? I called on you. You don't have to raise your hand. What? There's no out of one in there. You have a one-eighth and a three-fourths. Are you on number three? Yeah. What number is with my variable? One-eighth. What operation? What operation? So the opposite would be adding one-eighth. Anything I do to one side of my equation, I must do to the other side. One-eighth minus one-eighth is zero. So those just cross out. All I have left on this side is x. Now, on the other side, I have to add 3 fourths and 1 8. What's the ad addition of fraction rule? Ethan? No, it's not just add the two tops. I just realized. What is the rule for adding fractions, guys? Maybe I'll say everybody. It, well. For the final answer, the bottom doesn't change. What do I have to do to get to the final answer? Kaden? Uh, convert the fraction uh, to the difference? No. Kaden? Um, so, uh, you guys probably should be paying attention since you know you know the answer. I was going to say the, um, the way, like, if you, like, um, divide, um, Divide the fraction, so it like uh, no, no, keep flip. We're not dividing, we're adding or subtracting. Remember, your rules are different for fractions. That's what makes these difficult. How do I add fractions? I'll give you a hint. Apples and oranges. I don't know. Can I compare different things? No. So I have to make them the same. I need a common denominator. So the fourths and the eighths need to be the same. So to get the four to eight, I would multiply by two. But anything I do to the top, I do to the bottom. That makes that six eighths. Six eighths plus seven eighths. This is where I think Ethan was the one that said it. The rule comes in. Once my bottom is the same, it just stays the same, and I add the top. So six plus one is seven, and the eight stays the same. Nope. Well, yeah, you can on your own. Okay, the rest of this is for you guys to work on in class. 
We've got about 20 minutes. I'll let you guys work, and then we'll go through it real quick. Okay, guys, announcements are coming on, so I'm going to run through these really quickly. How many of you were able to finish all 10? Raise your hand. I got pretty good. Bless you. No, I will be honest. I remember this quiz when we graded it last year because we did do some harder numbers on the quiz because I got really upset because I had so many kids that were not wanting to follow the process that I put some really nasty numbers on the quiz. So I apologize in advance. I know they're bad. So what we ended up doing is if you'll at least go through the process, that's half the point. So you can actually get all the wrong answers. Actually, not even answer a lot of the questions. If you just do this part, watch. Here's half credit on the quiz. Bang, and instead of adding four and a half, I subtract four and a half. If you did that much, you actually got half credit on the quiz. On the quiz. Yep. Yeah. Just for that. The other 50% is actually being able to do the math, but because the numbers are a little harder, it's not so bad. Now, I'll be honest. Those cancel out. That's what's going to happen every time. That's the whole reason we do it. We're using that subtraction and addition properties of equality. So I can get to the additive identity property of zero and make it equal to just my variable. On the other side, when I'm doing mixed numbers, guys, you have a couple options. One, you can turn them both into improper fractions, but I'll be honest, the numbers get really bad then. So what I would actually do is pull out the fraction piece first. I'm going to do two-thirds minus one-half. To, to subtract fractions, I need the same denominator. So I'm going to multiply that by 2, that by 3. That gives me 4, 6, and 3, 6. 4 minus 3 gives me 1, 6. And then I do the whole numbers. 5 minus 4 is 1. The reason I do the whole numbers last is if I need to borrow, I'd be able to borrow from the whole numbers before I could make the fraction piece work. We already did 3. Number 4. Instead of subtracting 3.4, I'm going to add 3.4. If I add 3.4 to both sides, ooh, that's fun. So those cross out. X equals 8. Okay? So I apologize you can't read that word, but hopefully you understand what we're doing. Here's my variable. Instead of adding 2 and a fourth, I'm going to subtract 2 and a fourth. This one, they actually made it nice. Instead of doing one half, they gave you the 2 fourths, so I've got the common denominator. So 2 minus 1 is 1 fourth, 3 minus 2 is 1. Number 9, it doesn't matter with my, where my variable is. That's one of the reasons we do this process, guys. If you'll circle your variable and draw your line, everything else should still fall out very easily. I can now see the 3.4 is with my variable. The opposite of subtracting is adding. So I'm going to add 3.4 to both sides. Remember your rule on decimals, I have to line my decimal place up so that 9 is actually there. So 0 and 4 is 4, 9 and 3 is 12. So x equals 12.4. Number 7. 3 sevenths and 2 thirds. Instead of subtracting, I'm going to add 3 sevenths. For this one, Again, I've got to have a common denominator. We don't have anything that 3 and 7 meet, so I'm just going to do times 7 times 3. That gives me 14 21st and 9 21st. So that's going to be 23 over 21. Remember, we simplify, so that's 1 and 2 over 21. And that was it. So x equals, if there were whole numbers involved with those, I would just add that 1 to whatever the whole numbers were. Then our last one, here's our variable. The opposite of add, uh, subtracting 2.4 is adding. So I add 2.4 to both sides. Again, remember to line up your decimal places, meaning the 2 is over the 4, so that becomes 2.6. Any questions on any of those? Right, the Rami. Eight, the nine Good job. Really? Oh, the nine oh, I covered them up. Guys, quiet.
So these last couple, now I'm adding 11 and 3 fifths, those go away. That just leaves me X to do, guys, sit down. I didn't tell you to pack up. We're still working through these. So now I'm going to just do the fraction piece first. So 5 eighths and 3 fifths. Those are going to meet at 40, giving me 25 fortieths and 24 fortieths, which I add those up, that gives me 49 fortieths. Uh, this board is ridiculous. So that's 49 fortieths equals 1 and 9 fortieths. I take the whole numbers, 4 and 11 is 15, plus this 1 is 16. And 9 fortieths. And our last one, here's our variable. Instead of adding 1.3, I'm going to subtract 1.3. Those go away. Again, make sure you line up your decimal places because I'm subtracting. 1 minus 0 is 1. I can't do 2 minus 3, so I'm going to borrow. 12 minus 3 is 9. My decimal comes straight down. 8 minus 1 is 7. So x equals 7.91. Okay, hopefully you still have your homework out. Otherwise, you can do exactly what is written on here. But if you have your homework out still, you can add and change the directions, which for all of these, I just want you to solve algebraically. If I do not see that written on your paper, I will expect you to have done everything that it says, which means using tape diagrams, checking your answer, everything else that it says. So your choice if you've decided to put your homework away. The nice thing is it's all on tape, so when I give you a zero for it, I have proof as to why.